hello friends welcome back to my channel now in today's video we are going to look at how to deploy a docker image that is inside an amazon ecr to amazon ecs which is elastic container server and then i'll attach an application load balancer to our service so that we can access the application on our web browser okay let's start now let's look at how to deploy the docker container that's currently inside our ec2 registry which is right here tag that's latest how can we deploy that to amazon ecs first of course you go to the amazon ecs which is right here you just type ecs in the console and it will come up right, which is the first one here so first you need to create a cluster so click create cluster now give him some give it some name i'll call it iquant ecs and then between these two infrastructure the aws frogate is serverless which means we don't have to manage anything any workload if you pick this one then everything has to be set up manually by yourself so i'll go with the serverless now there are some other options down here that you may want to look at you have monitoring just to monitor the cpu memory disk and stuff like that for the container you see encryption if you want to encrypt it with kms that is also possible and then you can tag it but i'll go with the infrastructure fargate and the rest i will leave it as default so create this may take some time so i'll pause the video so you can clearly see our cluster is ready this is it after setting up the cluster the next thing is to configure a task definition and for that on the left side you see task definition click on that and this is an old one that i used click on create task definition so you can create it using json All right so if you want to do it from the terminal and automate it you would use json but because we are doing it with the console let's use the first option and let's give it some name let's call it icons ecs task def that's our task definition and of course our infrastructure that we selected earlier is fargate this is linux i'll leave all of this as default the task row i will leave it as empty now you normally use this if you want your container to have access to other aws services let's say s3 dynamo db we don't need that so you can leave that blank for the task execution row we will use ecs task execution row okay that is the one that you select right there by the way the task execution row that i selected here is what's gonna make this ecs cluster possible to pull the image out of ecr so if this is not here you can just click create new row and then that will help you to pull the image from ecr here you have some information on the container let's call this cicd2 now the uri you can clearly see here it's the repository uri slash image colon tag okay if you go to ecr this is our repository and this is the uri right so up to dot com this is the uri or the repository uri and then everything after the slash is the docker image so i can copy this and paste it here but then i have to add colon the tag that we used for our images latest so colon latest now our application lessons on port 3000 so back on the terminal our application is app.js right it listens on port 3000 where is it right here so we need to let this container listen on port 3000 so that we can map network from 3000 to 3000 so that is port 3000 
TCP and it's HTTP. Memory and CPU utilization, you can leave it as default, but based on the application's needs, you can change some of these variables or the values in here. You can also set up some environment variables here. I'll leave the rest as default and click create. Okay, so our test definition has been created successfully. Next, after creating a task definition, is to create an ECS service. Now the ECS service, let's go back to clusters. Click on the cluster. And in here, we are gonna create a service. Now what the service does, if you know anything about containers or Kubernetes, the service is what exposes the pod or deployments to the outside world, right? To the to have access to the public internet. So we will create a service. So click create. Of course, that is our cluster. And our current provider is Fargate. Remember when we were creating a cluster, we used Fargate. Okay. So application type, this is service. Family, you should be able to see the task definition that we just created. Select that. And then you need to provide a service name. So I will call it Iquant ECS SVC for service. And the desired number of tasks to launch. I'll just leave it as one. One is okay. Now all of these are diff. I'll leave them as default. Networking. Uh, these are default VPC and subnets that you can still use. So I will just use the default. This is a security group. And then of course, I'll keep this turned on. If this is off, turn it on. Now, what this will do is to attach or assign a public IP address to the Fargate that is running our application. Okay. That way it has access to the internet. Now, because I want my ECS service to access the internet, I'm also going to set up a load balancer. Click on load balancer. And then in here, select application load balancer. So I don't have an existing load balancer, so I'll create a new one. And of course, this are the port numbers for 3000 for our container and you map that to our host port. I will call it Iquant ECS ALB. Now listener is HTTP, so port 80. Target group. Okay, so we need to create a target group. I'm gonna create a new one and I'll call this ECS Iquant service target group TG. And it's of protocol HTTP. Now for the target group health check path, our application when you just open it will not display anything. Okay, it will have an error unless you add slash hello to the IP colon port number. You have to add slash hello for you to see this content of the application. Okay, so for the health, I'll make it slash hello. But that's where the this page actually is. That's okay for the target group. All right. Now I'm gonna make some changes to the security group. I do not know what services are allowed inside of the security group, so I want to create a new one. Okay. So create a new security group, and I'll call this Equant ECS SG. Now I want this security group. To allow traffic from port 80, select anywhere. I'm gonna add one more rule. This will be for port 3000. Let's use anywhere. Looks good now. Click create. And this will take some few minutes. So it seems our service is active now. 
and this is the service we just created down here if you click it you can see some information about it and you can clearly see the targets you see it's one healthy right and it's zero unhealthy it means this path did check out and that's what i was saying earlier that we don't have a page on the root path which is slash but we have a page on the path slash hello so this checks out as healthy okay now before we go ahead and check out the app let's go to ec2 this is elastic compute cloud and open it in a new tab here now what i want to do is to check if the necessary ports are allowed on our load balancer so for that let's check security groups and for the security group this is our security group okay select that and for the inbound rules these are the inbound rules we have port 3000 and port 80 allowed everything is cool here just checking so on the same ec2 dash port you can locate load balancers and this is our actual load balancer that we created okay you can click on it for more details these are the vpcs and the az's the availability zones and you can see the scheme here is internet facing so we should be able to access our service or application on the internet okay uh, this is our dns record let's copy this of course you can click this to also copy it on our browser i'm gonna do http and then i'll paste the dns name right there like that press enter and it says cannot get slash and that's because our app does not have any page on the root directory okay so i'm gonna do is add slash hello press enter and you can see hello world welcome to iquant youtube channel which is exactly the message that i have inside the application okay so so far Together, we've fully deployed the application on ECS cluster. So you see that I started refreshing the page here and you see that some data points are coming in here. You see memory utilization and CPU utilization. Let's do a cleanup of our cluster so that we are not charged. Already, if I go to my bill, billing and cost management and for that you go there by clicking on the user account and then you go to billing and cost management right okay so you click that you open this now these are the expenses so far monthly now this is october and you can see that already i'm owing six cents using the ecs service five cents for the load balancer and three cents for the vpc okay i remember all these were created after i set up the cluster right so i need to get rid of all this so that i will not be charged going forward so let's go back to the cluster this is our cluster get inside of it and it's currently active okay so i will select the service and i will delete the service and i'll force delete it okay delete that's successfully deleted let's refresh this and you can see that it's draining okay. so the service is gone Now I can delete the cluster. I will ask you to use the 
delete this. But sometimes just by clicking delete cluster, it will get rid of everything that is attached to the cluster, including the service, but we already removed the service. So it's gone. Right. So the only thing it's going to remove is the cluster itself and the stack that are attached to it. Close this. So back to our clusters, you see that this is the default one. Namespaces. This was a namespace that was created by our cluster. This, you're not charged for it, so you can leave it like that. Task definitions. This was a task definition that we had, right? This also doesn't charge us, so maybe I may need it in the future. So I'll just leave it as it is, but if you want to delete it, sure. Now let's go to the EC2 console. This is the EC2 dashboard. Now on the left side, look for target groups and load balancer. This is our target group. So it's already selected. Action, delete. Yes, delete. Now this is unable to delete because it's used by a listener or a rule. Now that rule is the load balancer that is attached to it. So if you can use Amazon Q to diagnose it, but it will basically tell you to delete the load balancer first. Okay, let's try to use that. So click on diagnose with Amazon Q. So you can see that it's tempted to modify target group and it, the target group is associated with the load balancer, which is a listener, right? So if you click help me resolve this, it will pretty much tell you to remove the load balancer first, and then you can remove the target group. All right, so you see here, go to the load balancer, identify the load balancer and remove that. Then you can remove the target group. So let's go back to EC2 and open the EC2 dashboard, load balancer. That's our load balancer selected. Go to actions and delete load balancer. Type confirm to de delete. That's gone. Good. Now we can go to target groups. Select it. Action. Delete. Yes, delete. And now you can see if deleted it. Thank you for joining me on this video. Like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And I will see you on the next one.